Okay, here we go. Find exact, exact ratios. And this is part one. This is the first video, part one. There's a second piece of the problem, but we're going to talk about in the second part of the video. Uh, exact ratios means that they're not going to want you to just punch these numbers into a, into a calculator. Okay, you're going to have to give a ratio, which is a fraction, right? So um, let's first start off with reviewing and going back and seeing. Remember the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90 triangle? First we saw 45, 45, 90. And then you also saw 30, 60, 90. Yeah. And the sides, you're familiar with the side relationships. We know this is x, we know this is x, and we know this is x root 2. That's not new, so that's why I'm going quick. And we know this is, for a 30, 60, 90, the one, oh, the one, the hypotenuse is 2x. The one across from 30 is x. And this one's x root 3. Okay. But on both of these and for the angles that you're going to be finding now, these, these I'm sorry, these exact ratios that you're going to be finding, this value of x that you're going to choose, we're going to choose x to be, we're going to let x equal 1. <coughs> for both of these triangles. And if we do that, and if we do that, then this is going to become what? Well, then the triangle you're working, when you're working with a 45, 45, 90 triangle, it's going to be x is 1 and x is 1. That'll be 1, that'll be 1. And that'll be 1 root 2, right? It'll be 1 root 2, but 1 times root 2, why would you say root 2? So now for a 45, 45, 90, these, these are the... This is the way you're going to label the three sides. You're familiar with the side relationship, but now you're going to use the value of 1 for x, and it'll be, the legs will be 1 and 1, and then this is 1 root 2, which is the same as well. 1 times root 2 is root 2. And then the same thing over here for the... Right, these are different. Then for the 30, 60, 90, right? This is 45, 45, 90. Now for the 30, 60, 90, again, now I'm going to let x equal 1 here again also. And what is that going to give you? Well, here's 30. Here's 60, and this side is x, so that's your 1 right here. This is 2 times 1, so that's 2. And this is 1 times root 3, so that'll just be root 3. So now, we're going to be using the value of 1 for x, and we know how the side measures go. So for a 30, 60, 90, it's going to be like this, right? So, these are these exact values exact values are these exact numbers here and when i write a ratio it'll be one over one or one over root two or one over two so you're not just going to give me some decimal values from the calculator okay you're going to use these side measures and um and find the exact ratios that way uh okay now moving on so what's going to happen is Let's say for the case of a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you're going to be plotting this or pretty much uh, superimposing one of these triangles, right, in, in your x, y axis. Now, if I have a 45, 45 angle, uh, triangle here, remember we talked about the reference angle? That's the most important part right there. 
If I draw an angle up and this is my terminal side and this is 45 and this is 45, <clears throat> well then like we said over here, then I'm going to be able to know that this is x, x, x root 2, so that's 1, that's 1, that's root 2, right? But if you put it <clears throat> on any other quadrants, if your 45 angle is over here, if your triangle is over here and the reference angle is 45, right? The reference angle being this one, right? The one with the x-axis. If you have a 45, 45, 90 in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, what do you need to watch out for? Yes, it's true that this is 1 and this is 1 and this is root 2. Okay, that's fine. But now, <clears throat> now that you put it on the x-axis, on an xy coordinate plane, now, remember, this is positive x and this is positive y. This, I know it's 1 and 1 here, but, but because this is on this side of the x-axis, you have to put a negative 1 right there, right? Because now we have this on quadrant 2, and here in quadrant 2, this is negative 1 on the x. This is still positive because it's going up, right? And then if you had a 45, 45, 90 in quadrant 3, let me put it over here so it won't get busy over here. If I had a 45 terminal side here, which I make my triangle now, and this is a 45, right? 45, 45, 90. Then I know it's 1. I know this. it's 1 and 1, right? Going back to this. The legs are 1 and 1, and the hypotenuse is what? Root 2. You'll never have to worry about the hypotenuse, by the way. Over here, the hypotenuse is always positive. Only look at the x and the y's. Now that I'm here in quadrant 3, is this positive 1 or negative 1? Well, it's on this side of the x, so it's negative 1. And what about this one? See, now it's not on the positive side. Now, see, you'd have to put a negative and a negative. Okay. So you're superimposing 45, 45, 90 in different quadrants. You have to watch out and, and make sure that the sign is correct. Only for the X and the Y. For the X and the Y, the hypotenuse is always going to be positive. All right, looking at a 30, 60, 90, same thing. You're going to graph these angles. This is what's going to happen in the assignment. You're going to graph these angles, right? And it's going to ask you to graph an angle. And let's say your angle ends up over here. Ooh. Let's say the terminal side of your angle is here. All right, well, then you're going to draw a triangle. And then eventually you're going to work with these. You're going to work with the angle here. And let's say you realize that this one is 30, 30 degrees. Well, if this is 30 and this is 90, this is a 30, 60, 90, right? Now, how do you label a 30, 60, 90? Well, again, you go back to x, 2x, and x root 3, but we're using 1 for... So, anyways, the hypotenuse side is going to be 2. The side across from 30 is 1. And then the last one, the one across from is a, is a square root of 3. But wait, you have to always look at your x and your y to make sure if one of these has to have a negative. Is my x, here's x, here's the x-axis. Is that okay to leave it positive root 3? Yes, it's on the positive side of x. Is this okay to leave it a positive one? No, it's on the bottom half. On the negative side of the y, so you gotta put a negative one there. Okay. Second part. Second part is this. Well, it's not the. It's the. It's the second part of this same video, but not the second part of the notes. Um, they're asking you. They're also going to ask you to find a point. Find a point on the terminal side. 
find a point. A point is a coordinate, right? An XY coordinate. Again, this is really not going to be any new information. We're just going to take what we have and just and just identify another piece. All right. So let's say you you draw your angle. All right. I'll show you how to draw the angles right now. Actually, you already know. Here's my XY axis. And let's say I have my angle here. Let's say my terminal side is here. Sorry, you drew your angle. You drew the angle, right? We learned how to draw angles in standard position. And then when you found the reference angle over here, right? Let's say you found out that this one was 60. Well, let me give you a big clue and a big hint right now, you guys. You're either going to be working with a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90. All right, 30, 60, 90. You remember, you always draw your triangle down. This is the terminal side. And if this is 60, that means this one's 30. And obviously, see, there's your 30, 60, 90. So again, you're, gonna, you're going to label the sides, right? This is a 30, 60, 90. The hypotenuse is 2. Across from 30 is 1. And this one's your root 3. Now this angle that you drew, right, whatever this angle is, this angle actually continues, right, to infinity or whatever. It keeps going, it keeps growing, whatever. But you're finding only one point, find a point on the terminal side, and we're using, we're using this information, the 30, 60, 90, when x is equal to 1. And when x is equal to 1, and you draw this triangle, the point is going to be this one here. That is a point on the terminal side. Now the question is, what would you tell me the x and the y? What would you tell me that coordinate, the coordinate, the coordinate would be right there? Well, since we identified it as a 30, 60, 90, and we labeled the three sides, then which one of these is your x? Well, x is this one, your horizontal. x is 1. And what's, oh, wait a minute, what did we forget to do? We forgot to check if one of these x or y's has to be positive or negative. Positive or negative. This one should be a negative one, right? See, it's on this side of the x-axis, right? And that one's okay, right? That's on the positive side of the y-axis. So our x is actually negative one. And the y is what? The square root of three. That's the point. That's the answer for that second piece. Okay. Let's do another one. Um, again, we're just going to identify a point. Okay. Well... What if I have an angle? Mm, right here, and then this one is like this. Let's say you draw your angle. They're going to give you an angle measure. You're going to draw it. You're going to draw your angle. Okay, you're going to be there. And remember, when you get to these angles and you draw them, um, again, your reference angle is either going to be a 30, a 60, or a 45, 45, 90. So let's say you go here, and this is what, 180 plus 30. Let's say this is 210 degrees, right? Let's say you draw 210 degrees. That'll be 180 plus 30. See, it's going to be 30. And then you're just going to pick a point anywhere and drop it down, right? Always to the x-axis. So we know this is 30, and I just created this triangle here. This is 30, this is what? 60. And then for a 30, 60, 90, you got to remember how do you label the sides. Uh, the hypotenuse is 2. Across from 30 is 1. And this one's going to be root 3, right?
And then you're going to do what? Make sure you look and you, you look at your X and your Y. Do any of these have to have a negative on them? Yes. This, if I go this way on the X axis, that you better put a negative there. Nothing else is going to tell you. You have to know that by looking at which quadrant it is. And if I go down this way, is this going to have to have a negative on the one? Yeah, it's on the bottom half of the Y. Po positive Y is up here, negative Y is right there. Again, the hypotenuse will always be positive. And so now, label this point. Give me the coordinates of this point. Well, I'll remember, the coordinates need an X and a Y. X is what? Horizontal. Y is vertical. So the point here for the terminal side of 210 degrees would be negative root 3, X, and then negative 1. All right. Let me go to the second video, and I'm going to explain how the problems are going to start from the beginning. All right, here we go. Let me stop this one.